the distances to other stars are depressingly enormous. Sure, it's incredibly far to go to Mars, Jupiter, and even Pluto, but at least you can design a robotic spacecraft to make the journey and see the science results in your own lifetime. But in the case of other stars, interstellar flight times will take thousands and even tens of thousands of years to send just a robotic mission. Fortunately, the Milky Way's got our back. Other star systems have been hurling comets and asteroids towards the solar system, and all we've got to do is catch them. It's only been a couple of years since astronomers made their first detection of interstellar object Oumuamua. It was first discovered by the Pan-STARRS telescope in Hawaii on October 19, 2017, in the before four times. Unfortunately, astronomers caught it as the object was speeding out of the solar system, and every day of observations was made while the object was getting dimmer and dimmer. And yet, by examining just a few pixels of telescope data, astronomers have learned a tremendous amount about the object. It has a very long rendezvous with Rama shape to it, which isn't like anything else in the solar system. But a new theory proposes that it might be the gravitationally congealed rubble of a tidally fragmented object. At some point, millions of years ago, a planet in another star system was torn apart through tidal interactions with another planet. The pieces were hurled out of the star system into the void of space in a long line. And then, over the eons, gravity pulled the pieces back together, cold welding them into the cylindrical shape which we saw pass through the solar system. It's a fascinating idea, but to really be sure, we need to get close. But that's not going to happen. Oumuamua is zipping away at an incomprehensible speed that'll take it out of the solar system entirely. Maybe alien astronomers in another star system will figure it out, but we won't. And there's Comet 2i Borisov, which is behaving much more like a regular comet. This object was first discovered in the summer of 2019 by an amateur astronomer and named after him. And follow-up observations confirmed that it's also on an interstellar trajectory. This time, however, astronomers were lucky enough to see it making its way into the inner solar system, not yet having made its closest encounter with the Earth. Astronomers were able to study 2i Borisov and confirm many of its similarities to other comets that come from the solar system, but also a few differences. Using observations from the European Southern Observatory's Atacama Large Millimeter Array, astronomers were able to determine that it formed in an incredibly cold environment. Borisov had deposits of carbon dioxide which were 9 to 26 times higher than any comet ever seen within the inner solar system. You can only get those kinds of concentrations when a comet forms at a temperature below negative 250 Celsius. So yeah, that's weird. Wouldn't it be great to study it up close? Well, too bad, you can't. Back to our original point then. What would it take to actually be able to intercept and maybe even catch up with an interstellar comet or asteroid to study it up close, to land on its surface, rove around, grab samples, study them, and more deeply understand the environments that they formed in? One mission that's already in the works is the European Space Agency's Comet Interceptor mission, which is currently in the design phase. Now, we've done a whole video about this mission, but I'll give you the brief version here. The idea is to send a small spacecraft to the Earth-Sun L2 Lagrange point, flying piggyback with the upcoming planet-hunting Ariel spacecraft in 2028. The spacecraft would loiter around this region, waiting for an interstellar object to be discovered by astronomers. Then, it would fire its thrusters, taking it on a trajectory that would allow it to intercept the comet or asteroid and capture some close-up images and data. Now that would be amazing, of course, but what we really want to do is send a spacecraft into orbit with the interstellar object, allowing astronomers to study it at leisure. And we'll talk about that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Stephen Murray, Julian Gayou, George Service, M. Anderson, Brad Allison, and the rest of our 852 patrons for their generous support. Want our videos early with no ads? Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. NASA's Advanced Innovative Concepts, or NIAC, recently awarded a Phase 1 grant to a proof-of-concept study for a mission that would actually fly out and rendezvous with an interstellar object. 
The proposal is called Dynamic Orbital Slingshot for Rendezvous with Interstellar Objects, and it was written by Richard Linares from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Linares proposes that NASA build a series of static satellites, or statites, which use a huge solar sail to hover in place at a large distance from the Sun. The Earth is traveling 30 kilometers per second in orbit around the Sun. In order to intercept an incoming interstellar object, you would have to be able to cancel out that orbital velocity and then match the velocity of the interstellar object on an interstellar trajectory. That amount of change in velocity is enormous, beyond the capabilities of all but the most powerful rockets launching the tiniest of payloads. But if you travel farther and farther away from the Sun, your orbital velocity drops. Pluto's orbital velocity is only 4.74 kilometers per second. One of these solar sailing static satellites could reach a point in the solar system where their orbital velocity is low, and they would normally fall into the sun and be consumed. But the light pressure from the sun hitting their sail keeps them in position and prevents them from falling. Lenari's plan is to put a bunch of these spacecraft across the solar system to wait for another interstellar object to pass into their field of view. When an object is detected, one of the statites would trim its solar sail and begin falling down towards the sun, making a gravitational slingshot around the sun and then into a trajectory that matches its target object. Its trajectory would be very similar to an interstellar object, allowing it to get close enough to be captured by the gravity and be carried along back out into interstellar space. A CubeSat science payload would be able to study the object in detail, sending its findings back to Earth, maybe even deploying tiny landers and rovers as we saw with the Hayabusa 2 mission. There's one additional idea to rendezvous with an interstellar object called Project Lyra, named after the constellation that Oumuamua was thought to have originated from. According to Andreas Hein and others from the Initiative for Interstellar Studies, it could have been possible to intercept Oumuamua. All you need is a rocket capable of catching up with an object traveling, you know, 30-ish kilometers per second on a trajectory that carries it out of the solar system. You also need a serious heat shield to deal with the high temperature of a potential slingshot trajectory that takes it close to the sun. And you need a featherweight spacecraft that's still capable of gathering scientific data. Now, according to their calculations, it could have been possible to send a two-ton spacecraft to Borisov using a Falcon Heavy rocket if, big if, the comet had been discovered much earlier and you were able to launch it by July 2018. But even if the mission was able to launch by 2030, you could still make a close encounter using a fully loaded space launch system, a flyby of the sun, maybe Jupiter, and deliver a three kilogram CubeSat to Borisov by 2045. I suspect the Project Lyra team will continue to recalculate the interception timelines for every new interstellar object that gets discovered until someone actually listens. The point of this is that you've got to act quickly, build your spacecraft now and get it ready so that it can be launched on a rocket within a few months of detection. Oh, and detect those objects much earlier when there's still time to reach them. Astronomers have estimated that there could be as many as 30,000 interstellar objects passing through the solar system at any time. Each one of these formed in a different star system and could teach us a tremendous amount about the formation of the universe itself. So let's catch one and learn all we can. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here, support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. Now, like I said, we've done a whole video on ESA's Comet Interceptor mission. So if you want more details on that, you can watch this video now.